Welcome to this video. I'm excited to talk about network scheduling today, in particular uh, critical path method or CPM, and the concepts of uh, forward pass, backward pass, and having lag in uh, networks. Networks are uh, very powerful for both uh, planning and control staging of a project, and they clearly show the interdependence uh, for uh, activities in the project and uh, work packages and also elements. For different ways to illustrate uh, project networks, and uh, we can see different networks in these slides. There are uh, numerous ways to illustrate uh, project activities. Using a bar chart or GAN chart is one of them. We can have uh, activity on arrow networks or activity on node networks as well. Activity on uh, node uh, networks uh, are very clear way of uh, illustrating uh, project networks. In this activity block, uh, we have early start time and early finish time on the top row of the activity block and late start time and late finish time, LS and LF on the bottom row of activity blocks. Obviously, relationships are shown by uh, arrows. There are different steps uh, in uh, network scheduling. Uh, the first one is to draw the network based on the logic given, and we have uh, examples here. The second step is to calculate the forward pass and uh, having uh, earliest times. In uh, the activity block, these values are populated on the top uh, row of the block. Here is an example for activity H. You can see we have two options as the earliest start time of 9 coming from activity E or 22 coming from activity F. In the forward path, the rule is to choose the latest date, in this case 22 days. We can complete the forward pass for this uh, project and the completion time of 24 days is uh, calculated. Here is a practice example for you. I uh, encourage you to pause the video and uh, uh, have the forward path on the project network uh, done. The next step uh, in network scheduling is uh, to uh, calculate late uh, finish or LF and late start or LS times for the project in the backward pass and these uh, values are populated in the bottom of the activity block. As you can see in this example for activity E we have two choices for a late finish time 13 coming from activity F and 23 days coming from activity H the rule in the backward pass is to use earlier states. Here we can calculate uh, the late start and the late finish uh, values in the backward pass. A good uh, control for us is uh, reaching uh, zero as the late start time for activity A when we reach uh, the end of the network. Here is an another uh, practice example for you again uh, it's a good uh, idea to pause the video here and uh, complete uh, the backward pass for this uh, project. The concept of lag uh, is uh, important in network scheduling. Uh, we have waiting time or idle time uh, between uh, certain activities on the project. If you consider a construction project example, when you have concreting, uh, there might be a waiting time required for the concrete to set and uh, reach the desirable uh, strengths before the next uh, activity or loading on the concrete can be done. Here is an example, the network uh, with lags. Uh, you can see activity A is uh, completed uh, at the end of the second day and then there is a lag of four. So we can start activity B uh, at the sixth day. The completion time for the project is 26 days, and I encourage you to check the calculations in the forward pass and backward pass in this project. Another uh, practice uh, example that uh, you can complete uh, in your own time. 
that's all uh, we wanted to cover in this uh, video i uh, look forward to having your future uh, discussions thank you